Hello again. In the last lesson we looked at training and testing. We saw that we can evaluate a classifier on an independent test set or using a percentage split with a certain percentage of the data set used to train and the rest used for testing. Or, and this is generally a very bad idea, we can evaluate it on the training set itself, which gives misleadingly optimistic performance figures. In this lesson, we're going to uh, have a look at a little bit more about training and testing. Uh, in fact, what we're going to do is repeatedly train and test using uh, a percentage split. Now, in the last lesson, we saw that if you simply repeat the training and testing, you get the same result each time because Weka initializes the random number generator before it does each run to make sure that you know what's going on when you do the same uh, experiment again tomorrow. But uh, there's a way of overriding that, and so we will be using independent random numbers on different occasions to train and to, to produce a percentage split of a data set into a training and test set. Okay, so I'm going to open the segment challenge data again. That's what we used before. Now notice there's uh, 1,500 instances here. That's quite a lot. I'm going to go to classify. I'm going to choose J48, our standard method, I guess. I'm going to use a percentage split. And because we've got 1,500 instances, I'm going to choose 90% for training and just 10% for testing. I reckon that 10%, that is 150 instances for testing, is going to give us uh, a reasonable estimate. And we might as well train on as many as we can to get the most accurate classifier. Okay, so I'm going to run this. And the accuracy figure I get, this is what I got in the last lesson, is 96.6667%. Now, this is a misleadingly high accuracy here. I'm going to call that 96.7% or 0.967. And then I'm going to do it again and just see how much variation we get of that figure, initializing the random number generator to different amounts each time. If I go to the More Options menu, I get a number of options here which quite useful. Outputting the model, we're doing that. Outputting statistics, we can output different evaluation measures. We're doing the confusion matrix. We're storing the prediction for visualization. We can output the predictions if we want. We can do a cost sensitive evaluation. And we can uh, set the random seed for cross validation or percentage split. That's set by default to 1. I'm going to change that to 2, a different random seed. We could also output the source code for the classifier if we wanted. But I just want to, ch I just want to change the random seed, and then I want to run it again. So before we get, we got 0.967, and this time we get 0 0.94, 94%. Quite different, you see. And if I were then to change this again to, say, 3, and run it again. Again, I get 94%. Uh, if I change it again to 4 and run it again, I get 96.7%. Uh, Let's do one more, change it to 5, run it again, and now I get 95.3%. So here's a table with these figures in. If we run it 10 times, we get uh, this set of results. And given this set of experimental results, we can calculate the mean and standard deviation. The sample mean is the sum of uh, all of these uh, error figures, or these uh, success rates, I should say, divided by the number 10 of them. That's uh, 0.949, about 95%. So that's really what we'd expect to get. That's a better estimate than the 96.7 that we started out with, a more reliable estimate. And we can calculate the sample variance. We take the deviation from the mean. We subtract the mean from each of these numbers, and we square that, add them up, and we divide not by n, but by n minus 1. That might surprise you, perhaps. The reason for it being n minus 1 is because we've actually calculated the mean from this sample. 
and uh, when the mean is calculated from the sample you need to divide by n minus 1 leading to a slightly larger variance estimate than if you were to divide by n. Uh, so in this case we take the square root of that and in this case we get uh, a standard deviation of 1.8%. So now you can see that the real performance of J48 on the segment challenge data set is approximately 95% accuracy plus or minus approximately 2%. So anywhere let's say between about 93 and 97% accuracy. So these figures that you get that Weka puts out for you are misleading. You need to be careful how you interpret them because uh, the uh, result is certainly not 95.3333%. There's a lot of variation on all of these figures. So remember the basic assumption is the training and test sets are sampled independently from an infinite population and you should expect a slight variation in results, perhaps more than just a slight variation in results. You can estimate the variation in results by setting the random number seed and repeating the experiment. And you can calculate the mean and standard deviation experimentally, which is what we just did. So off you go now and do the activity associated with this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye.